So Wunderlist is a um, software as a service tool that helps individuals and teams get stuff done. The idea is to revolutionize the way people work on their own with their to-dos or with others and uh, in a beautiful, simple, elegant way. As a, as a Berlin startup, um, the, you, know, you guys have, have become a very big global brand. Tell us about the, the Berlin ecosystem and how that helps you do that. Berlin is a, an interesting place at the moment. Um, four years ago, five years ago when we started, there was not, no e ecosystem. But over those four or five years, you, you saw a tremendous amount of companies coming up. And um, we always get asked, uh, what is the reason? And I think it's a combination of, of several things. One is uh, culture. Uh, it's a the culture that drives around creativity and music and, and uh, people are just super energetic. And then you have low cost of living. Um, you have beautiful houses, but you can still afford your rents, not like in San Francisco or New York or, or other places in the world. Um, and um, then you have some successful companies here that started four or five years ago, like ourselves, and that attract more talent. And so you, you, you create that ecosystem that wasn't there before, uh, but it's now thriving. And over the next 10 years, probably, we'll see the first rounds of let's say exits and then people go public, uh, companies go public and uh, I think that overall will really fuel it and uh, hopefully Berlin will be one of these big tech hubs where um, creative world class people come to work. Uh, you describe yourselves as an Amazon for deposits, at least that's the way it was described there in the briefing. Uh, could you tell us a bit about what uh, you guys are doing and how you intend to take on Europe, what you're offering? Uh, so what uh, we uh, actually uh, constructed for our clients is a first possibility to onboard and to take uh, 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 to identify themselves online uh, with uh, with us, and then take an opportunity to uh, deposit their money with a lot of banks. Currently, we have 10 banks online, 40 products, uh, and the convenience for the, our customers compared to a uh, normal banking offer is very high. Both they have uh, one platform access and the second one they get interest rates which they don't get uh, normally in Germany. And uh, you plan to go beyond Germany. At the moment it's the, the, the core offering is enabling German depositors to deposit with other banks around, around Europe, including AIB in Ireland. Uh, you, you plan to go beyond Germany, so will Irish customers soon be able to, to use your service? Yes, we plan that very soon, so uh, early autumn, around October, we'll launch in uh, Europe. Uh, our first uh, launch website will be in English, so that uh, actually all customers from the European Union, and especially English-speaking ones, will be very welcome to join our platform. And Irish customers will be able to uh, uh, take the products not only from AIB, but from many other banks, including two German banks on the platform. Navabi, what is the problem Navabi is trying to solve? Um, so there are um, millions of uh, women, um, plus size uh, definition of, of the fashion industry, not being catered to. Um, we are a global leader in premium plus size fashion and catered to, um, to a, a million um, female population globally, serving a great fashion, inspiration, advice, and is this an area that's been overlooked by the fashion industry generally? I mean, um, you know, it's, it's, it serves a real need, but, you know, if, if we look at fashion, it's the, the body size is moving to zero rather than 14. Yeah, pretty much so. So basically, there's a stigma in the fashion industry. Um, everyone wants to see size zero, but the reality is that we are not all size zero. Um, so a m majority of women around the globe cannot really find fashion. They rather find clothing, and they cannot really express who they are. Fashion and food are two biggest grown areas in e-commerce. Would, would you agree with that? Um, so sure. I mean, when we started uh, six years ago, I remember uh, fashion was not on the top list. It was like, yeah, will fashion work online? And um, I think it proved it today uh, already that it is a big thing. And I personally believe food will be also next big thing. You can see it in Silicon Valley. People crazily investing in everything with food tech. Very good. And just in terms of fashion itself, I mean, um, we used to go into stores and buy our clothes. I mean, how comfortable are people generally with actually ordering online? And, and is it a case that you've made it very fluid to return stuff you're not happy with and make it, you know, buy what you want again? Yeah, actually, um, a very good question. I see it um, on myself also. I buy more and more online because um, I get enabled. I, I can um, return uh, free and I can uh, just order it and it comes the same day or the next day. So it is much easier than before. Hence, I buy more online, and once the experience is okay, you don't really need to go offline anymore. 
Uh, Lucas, uh, One Football. Uh, everybody who loves football knows about One Football in Europe. Can you tell us about how the company came together. So I founded the company in 2008, and the idea was always to um, deliver the best football content through a mobile device um, for actually all the football fans who have an emotional dependency on that content. And um, we started 2008, and we grew the business till 2012. Um, um, with really big and good KPIs developing. And um, based on that, we were in the position to get institutional money uh, on board from great investors like Early Bird, Union Square Ventures, TPG Growth, Lakestar, etc., to actually build out our vision um, as a product and tech company, understanding the user and building the best product for the user. You, you made a transition from being a, a kind of a, a, a publishing-led company mm -hmm. to being more of a product company. Mm -hmm. um, how was that transition managed? And today, I mean, could you kind of sum up the scale of your user base and, and the, the, the various devices and platforms it's spread across? Mm -hmm. So, um, actually, a transition is always difficult, but the thing is when you always had one vision, which was actually to build the platform, then you learn how to execute on the, tra the transition. And with the institutional money, we were in the position to do the transition from a publisher to a platform. And the platform means nothing else than not buying content and not marketing, marketing it through third-party marketers who take control of the product. It's actually our product, and we have control of everything. And um, what you see is that this actually puts us in the position to localize much faster. So localize means we, when we go into a language, then um, actually we just need to plug in the RSS feeds from the content providers and localize our product in terms of the um, translation of the navigation. And then we're localized for, I don't know, the Italian market, which actually brings us in the position with the good user interface to address that market generically off out of Berlin and not with local source, uh, resources. I am started originally as an exhibition for people who uh, were taking photographs on their smartphones, or the iPhone particularly, and it became an app in 2011, and ever since then it's become a, a marketplace for uh, user-generated photography. Could you tell us a bit about the origins of, of I am and, and, and where it's going to today in terms of its plans to become a, a marketplace? Yeah, so uh, it happened in 2010 that basically one of our co-founders flew was in New York and his camera got stolen. He aspired to become a photographer, went to New York, had a huge DSLR and it got stolen. Oh, no. And all he had left was basically an iPhone that a friend gave to him. And that was an iPhone 3 back in 2010. And he realized, you know, the pictures are not that bad, right? So he searched and he looked for more images and he found like the small community on Twitter, on Flickr, who were sharing these images. But there were no, was no platform whatsoever for these type of images. So together with Gen and the other founders, they created uh, I Am as a platform to celebrate this mobile photography movement. A uh, first exhibition came out uh, back in 2010 in Berlin and in New York. And since you, know, you could feel there was a growing movement, the natural step was to create an app, which then launched in summer 2011. And ever since, millions of photographers joined us and we're at the moment on a journey of creating a real platform for this new generation of photographers to share photos, to discover photos, and to do more with their photos as of like publishing them, exhibiting them, and selling them on our marketplace. And again, uh, Peter Thiel, uh, well-regarded, well well-renowned uh, Silicon Valley investor, came on board as part of an 18 million funding round in, in IM. Tell us about the expansion plans, because I understand at present you're available in the US, but you, you plan to go global, and you plan to also create a market where uh, aspiring photographers can share 50-50 with you guys the, the royalties from photos. Exactly, yeah. We started in the beginning super globally. So the app was, so we are a German Berlin based company, but we the, the, the first language was also uh, English and and uh, the goal was always to be big and to be global and um, that's, I'm pretty sure that uh, also Peter Thiel saw in, in us in the in the whole team here, 60 people are working right now for us and and um, it's it's about also the brand but it's also about our technology it's not about and for, for sure the community is the most important part but there are a lot of technical aspects uh, regarding the marketplace that okay keywords and stuff like that that's the reason why we have a huge R&D team and that's why big players like uh, Valar and Peter Thiel are investing in us right and uh, it's not about uh, selling images or I think that's super boring to have only a marketplace it's about the whole 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 
range of uh, having a cool brand, having exhibitions. So in September we'll have a, a festival in New York, right? And uh, we have also some cool speakers from the NASA and also from Magnum and stuff like that and uh, collaborating with big brands and, and also announcing our awards in a couple of weeks. And that's, that's the whole range, right? And I think that's, that makes IAM a cool platform. Get your guide. It's started in Zurich as a bunch of students uh, on a project and you basically decided to come to Berlin. Could you tell us what were the factors that led you to pick Berlin and how the company has developed since coming here? Oh sure, absolutely. So um, why we picked Berlin was a couple of reasons. Um, so we started, you know, sort of like just as a background uh, info, we started as a bunch of students literally out of a dorm room in Zurich. And for us it was clear that Zurich is a very tough place to scale the company. It's a banking town, it's highly expensive, very little tech talent, um, you know, there are no other tech companies, no venture funding, etc. So we looked at Europe and we were like, you know, sort of like where do we go? And Berlin was just sort of like starting to blossom. And we went here for, you know, literally three reasons that all turned out to be true. Reason number one was international talent, and I think that's still the most important uh, 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 factor. You know, you can hire anyone from you know, sort of like a French-speaking content manager to an English marketeer to an, you know, sort of like product manager from Silicon Valley. You get them to Berlin. Number two was uh, not to be forgotten cost. Um, you know, sort of like Berlin is a great, vibrant city, but it comes as, at like half of the price tag as Paris uh, or London. Mm -hmm. And uh, number three was venture funding. Uh, so uh, Berlin does have a strong ecosystem. System, now a very established ecosystem of VCs and also the West Coast and East Coast VCs from the US and even the Chinese venture capitalists now are now coming to Berlin to invest here. And then last but not least, I would say because of the ecosystem, you also have a lot of other great companies to learn from. And we've actually really very much enjoyed being in touch with the ecosystem and learning from other people. So that's what I would say. So like it's, it's talent, uh, it's definitely price tag of the city, and which is still moderate, and uh, then ultimately the venture funding. And in terms of like uh, the market you're targeting, it's 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 not just booking a trip; it's what you do when you get to a destination, mm -hmm. and that's a very interesting market to be in. Um, but one of the things that you you said quite interesting was that you know the days of us buying Lonely Planet books, printed books, may be over. That we will a younger generation is relying more on apps like yours to to, uh, to you know to figure out what they're going to do when they get to a destination and how they spend their money. Absolutely, um, I totally agree. I think in five uh, to ten years, so five years earliest to ten years latest, we will not have travel guidebooks anymore. Um, there's a tipping point where the production of guidebooks is just not worth it anymore, and we're very close to it. And the reality is that travelers today want to have very dynamic information, including reservation capabilities in destinations, and that is exactly where uh, where Get Your Guide, guide starts. We are basically the touch point where you can, you know, pre-travel uh, actually plan, you know, on your desk stop but just as well and that's the much more predominant and an exploding use case right now you can just be in the destination wake up in your hotel room open the get your guide app and book whatever you want to do um, what, what is close to you or what so like you know is open today where we have availability best pricing the best deal something that's tailored to your needs so uh, I think that's much more where travel is going it's, uh, it's much more spontaneous It's right here right now on my fingertips and I can do the reservation with two taps I don't think it's very much about stuff like paper and reading anymore that's just not how it's developed 